Okay, so here's my stemless glitter wine glass. And I'm gonna walk you through all the layers and how you can alter this and use it for your own projects. So first let's click open the layers palette so we can see what's in there. I'm actually gonna drag it out and just hide this so there's a little bit more room, okay? Now, starting from the bottom of the layers palette, we have a layer called background white. If you unclick the eye, you can see that the background has turned transparent. But don't be alarmed that there's white inside the wine glass itself because that disappears anytime there's something behind this glass. For example, if I click this next layer up called background blue to see details, you can see that the white disappeared and you can just see right through that glass as if it is all glossy and beautiful and transparent. Let's change it back to white. All right, so then there's a folder called Stemless Wine Glass Plus Smart Objects. So everything to do with this wine glass is inside of this folder. If I click on the folder and I grab my move tool, I could easily move my wine glass around all that I wanted. And I could move it into another document if I want to. Let's open up the folder. Now at the bottom of the folder, we have another folder called Stemless. If I hide that, you can see that's the glass itself, leaving the glitter and the smart object design alone on the screen. Turn it back on again. Let's hide the glitter and the word groom for a second and just open up the folder that says stemless. Inside that folder, the top layer is details. That's this dark stuff. Then we have highlights, which is hard to see unless I turn that blue layer back on and you can see highlights off, highlights on. That's really what gives it dimension. And then we have shadows at the bottom and the reflection. I'm gonna turn it back to a white background. So if you didn't want a reflection, you could easily turn that off. Or if you wanted to add your own shadows or remove these, you can turn those off too. All you want, I'm gonna close that folder. Okay, next up we have the glitter dip area. So I'll turn that on and I will turn off the color. So <clears throat> this layer by itself has the glitter in gold and I have used a mask to make it show just on this portion of the glass. I also, if I zoom in, you can see kind of roughed up the edge where the glitter top meets the glass so you don't just have a straight line, which doesn't look very natural. This is more like what would happen in real life. You'd have a little bit of glitter here and there, a little be a little bumpy where it meets the glass. I also have an effect on this. You can see underneath it says effects, gradient overlay. If I turn off the effects, you'll see that this area where it's dark at the bottom and light at the top is going to change. You see now it's just sort of an overall same shade of gold. But with the gradient overlay effect, it looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more interesting. The next layer up is our color layer. And I'm gonna just make my layers palette a little wider so you can see what I typed in there. I called this color layer and I wrote double click the icon to edit because that's exactly what you do. So first thing we wanna do is turn on the visibility. So click this box to check the eye. And the color I have in here is kind of a purple. Let's double click the icon. Okay, now we have a properties menu. Just gonna scooch layers over, scooch properties here, okay. So in this properties menu, we have a hue slider, which looks like a rainbow. We have saturation slider, which takes it either from all the way to the left would be basically black and white, all the way to the right would be the super most brightest version of the color possible. And then we have the lightness layer, all the way left makes it black, all the way right makes it white. So it's just gonna get darker as you drag it left and lighter as you drag it white, right? So I'll show you how to do that. Let's start with lightness. If I drag it to the left, you see it's changing, it's getting darker and darker. And the number here is going into the negatives, negative 46, negative 62, and so on, all the way to black, where it says negative 100. <clears throat> and to the right, it would say positive 100 if it's all the way to white. But we're gonna keep that right at zero, which is sort of the neutral position. Okay, now saturation, if I drag it all the way to the left, it becomes black and white which is a pretty decent approximation of silver. And then all the way to the right, and it's a very, very bright sort of 
<clears throat> magenta y purpley color. Again, I'm going to leave it right at zero for now. Okay, now the hue slider is where the fun happens. <laughs> so say you have aqua glitter. You're going to drag this hue slider around until you see the shade of aqua that you want. And it's not where you think it is. Like you think if I put this little arrow right here where it's aqua, that's what's going to show. But it, it's more like the opposite color. So just drag it. Ignore what this rainbow looks like. And just look at your image. And wait until it looks like the color that you need. So if you needed this aqua shade, that's at plus 137. Alrighty. And then if you wanted it to not have a, a gradient effect on it, you turn off that effect and then it would look like this. I'm going to turn it back on now. Okay, so that's how the properties works. I'm just going to drag that into my layers box to keep it out of the way. Go back to layers. Okay, so next up we have the smart objects layer. So I tried to design this with you in mind thinking, okay, you might be adding vinyl to this glass where it's just on the front. See where it says groom? Or you might want to have that same thing on the back side. So I made this other layer. This says, so this one says smart object front. This one says smart object back duplicate of front. And I colored them both red so you know that there's, those go together. I took this duplicate, which goes on the back, and I reduced the opacity up here. It says opacity 17 to make it look like you're kind of seeing through the glass. But you can make that as dark or as light as you want or not use it at all. But the point here is that, let's change it back to 17. I like that. If you edit one of these smart objects, the other one is going to update to say the exact same thing or to look the exact same way. So in this example, I've actually typed this out in my Photoshop document. You're probably going to have some sort of a ping image that you paste in here. Um, so you would just copy and paste it into one smart object and it's going to duplicate itself on the back. I'll show you how. So if I double click smart object front over here on the left side in this little box, it opens up a new tab called the .psb where it says groom. If I double click groom, I'm going to edit it to say bride. Click the move tool to deselect. And we're going to hit file, save, which is command S on the Mac. And I think control S on the PC. Go back to the original file and you can see it's updated. Now it says bride on the front. It also says bride on the back. We can go back to that PSB layer and close it. Now the third smart object layer, this blue one says smart object back separate. So this would be if you know you have a design that wraps all the way around the glass and only part of it shows in the back and part of it shows in the front. Um, like say bride is just huge and it wraps all the way around the glass. Maybe for the front layer, you just have B, R, I partly showing and then you put D, E on the back. And that would be an opportunity for you to edit this one smart object to put the BRI there and then go to this separate back blue one, double click, open that and put the IDE in here. So you can see this is a totally different word. I'm going to change it to say word. It's blue. We'll hit save. I'll close it. Now it says word and back. It says bride in front. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you could use this file. I did not add glitter as an option for the smart object area because I didn't want this to get to be too complex of a file. But if that's something that you think should be added or that you're going to be using a lot, let me know and I'll find a way to get that for you either by adding it to this file or creating a new product for you to use. And this file is available for purchase in my creative market shop. Here's the link to my creative market shop right here. And I'll also list links to other ways you can get more mock-ups like these for an amazing savings in the notes below this video on YouTube. So check that out for deals and links to my other videos. And also I would love it so much if you'd hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video so I can get in front of more awesome people like you. Thanks for watching.